Hey, was hey, was good. It's your boy, Mr. Wonka Seven. So let me tell you what happened. Now I recorded episode thirteen, I believe, and thirteen was where I did the dungeon, the Earth Gift, Earth Gift Shrine. And then afterwards, I tried recording what would have been episode 14, where I went through, not Hellfire Chasm, but, what was it? I don't remember, I think it was, yeah, Whisperin' Cove, because I wanted to get a specific weapon. Well, in the middle, when I tried to reset to get a battle into my favor against... A special boss there was an emulation issue and then when I reset it to fix everything it started me up in this slot it didn't remember the other slot so that sucks however it was a communication error I believe I'm going to use this to my advantage and I'm going to beat the game under these conditions It might actually be more entertaining this way, seeing as I won't have to deal with really frustrating bosses. So from this point onwards, episode 13 is actually going to be bonus episode 1, which will have a different continuity from bonus episodes 2, 3, and 4, where I'm going to go through all the other dungeons. This is actually very advantageous for me since it means that I can operate on the rest of the game in my own pace. Which I kind of want anyway. Any chance I have to be more relaxed and not feel like I'm behind schedule or ahead of schedule, I can do things my own way. I'm going to take that opportunity. So, here's the big plot twist. You know who that is? That, my friends, is Garland. Are we ready for this guy? Hmm. I'm gonna need... Vivi to eat a dry ether. Probably won't even be necessary. And as for Cecil, yeah, you can have one too. An elixir, that is. Yeah, I remember you. You were the first boss of the game. We beat the living hell out of you. Why are they re moving back that way? Like they're scared of this dude. I mean, they are kind of seeing a ghost, so I could understand how they would be intimidated, especially since they know how angry he might be since they killed his ass. So the whole goal is he's trying to create a time paradox. This final boss seems actually pretty good. But there's actually a very important point I want to make about these final bosses. They all have Lakers colors, if you've noticed. I know that's something weird to pay attention to, but yeah, it's true. All of them have Lakers colors. Okay, let me see. All right, Protectora. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna buff him up maybe six times. That's the goal with temper. If I had Invisera, I would also use that. Flare. Hmm. I think my goal is to put haste on... I don't know if this is turn 2 or turn 3. I think that's only gonna hurt, but... So I've been buffed how many times? How many Mega Leaksers do I have? I'm just gonna waste them. There's no point in keeping them, actually. Giants gloves, temper. All right. Good thing I did that. Hopefully, it doesn't kill Vivi or Farian or anyone of that nature. Okay. Okay, focus on Ferian. Okay, if I had a field healing spell, I would be spamming it by now. However, since I don't, I'm going to be using my black mage as a healer now. Elixir. It's got anything else? Hmm. No, I do not. Okay, I'm gonna blast you with that. Okay, get butts in time and you'll be fine.
By the looks of it, it's actually over now. Yeah, it's over now. I've officially beaten this game after what was it? I think it was... I first got this game as a prison... Uh, not prison Christmas... Uh, present. A Christmas present... For the Christmas of 2004 for my dad. I got this game because of a commercial that was playing all the time on Cartoon Network for those Game Boy Advance games. I wanted to play Final Fantasy 1 or 2 Dawn of Souls, so... I got it that time. Now it's the summer of 2015 and I finally beat in this game. This wasn't when I expected to beat this game. I expected to beat this game on a Friday. Specifically, the Friday five days from now. Not this Sunday. Wow, this track is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not like most Final Fantasy ending themes. It's a little more down to earth. Like, I remember Final Fantasy V's being a little over the top. Along with all the other SNES ones, PS1, Final Fantasies. And everything afterwards where they started putting songs in the credits. So what's going to happen to the Warriors now? So they got to go back to the present. And they still got work to do. They had work to do before this began. This game. And now they have work again because they got to fight Garland a third time hopefully. Hopefully not, actually. Hopefully they can reason with the guy. And now they're trying to throw more questions into us. See, I don't like that. They're trying to further muddy the plot. I really like the harp in this though. The harp, the horns, the uh, violins thing. I don't know. That's not violin, that's another kind of instrument. Now, this is one of the last few, not last few, this is the first Final Fantasy game that came out. But, as the series went on, it stopped being high fantasy. Whereas, like, the Tales series started off high fantasy, and it's still high fantasy. A lot of the uh, Dragon Quest games are still high fantasy. Although, not as much as Final Fantasy or Tales, but again... Elves, dwarves, dragons that can speak and have their own civilizations. 
I mean, once six came in, like industrial technology came in, seven brought in modern technology and futuristic technology, and five was kind of it had a lot of technology with it too, and it wasn't very high fantasy. But this one, three and four, were very high fantasy. I don't remember two though. I mean, just look at the view you're getting right now. You wouldn't get something like that from Final Fantasy seven or six. So let's get the credits. I want to see some of the facts about this version. Yoichi Wada, I think that was the old president of Square. The original staff, of course, was Nazir. Nas, a uh, New York Iranian American, who programmed the first few Final Fantasies. You should know who that guy is. He did the writing for the first three Final Fantasy games. Uh... Okay, now let's see. Takashi Tokita produced the first two remakes for the Dawn of Souls version. He wasn't involved with the original Final Fantasies 1 and 2. But he was involved with 4. He was very involved with 4. He was the main designer and the writer for that one. Uematsu didn't really do the actual composition because he already made all these tracks. But he did supervise. So He didn't arrange, but he did supervise. Make sure it was to everyone's liking. And of course, you got Toze. Yo, this company is weird as shit, Toze. They make some fighting games too. Like, I think a couple of anime fighting games I've played in the past. Like the Naruto ones and maybe even the Dragon Ball ones. These are some interesting American or Western names. Like, I don't... I don't think you're going to be able to find names like that anymore. Last names like that. Or first names, too. Except for those simple ones like Aaron. Can I get like a... Alright. So let me load up this new one. Interesting, interesting. So I won't try that one. Let me see if there's going to be a communication error now. No, it's all good now. Yeah, I'm going to be very careful about how I play that game now. Um, there's going to be a lot of catch-up work and level grinding in the meantime. But, safe to say, I got to cook up three more episodes of this. I already got a post-game episode inadvertently saved up it wasn't gonna be a post game one but you know what bonus episodes are my style now i like that structuring it means if you just came for the main game you don't gotta wait for all that bullshit no more all right it's your boy mr wonka 7 back again with all this wonka tastic stuff and i'll say i'm a ick day which means suck my dick and pay glenn the more you know.